the a and Vent Podcast. We back with the A&R Vent Podcast. I got my brother Madman in the building. Yes, sir. And I got an amazing singer uh, by the name of Rennie. He's in the building right now. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm good, man. Chilling, chilling. All right, so Madman, you got a few questions for Rennie? Yeah, hey, Rennie, man. How's it going, bro? Um, how's your quarantine going so far? Okay. It's been going good, man. Just been staying at home, uh, you know, still working, 
being productive, making music and stuff. But yeah, it's been good, yeah. man. That's great. Where, where are you at right now? I'm currently in Australia, uh, Melbourne, Australia. The back oh, there. Wow. Wow, how is it out there? Right now, it's it's really like it's pretty good. Like in terms of like the coronavirus, you know, mm-hmm. everything's sort of like a lot more chill now. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still under like stage three, so we still can't get out. But it's easing down. I think in the next coming weeks, we're probably gonna be able to like go out and like you know meet up with people again. But right now, we're just we're still basically in lockdown. Uh-huh. So let's get into it, man. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Yeah, about yeah, your um, your your, your how how did you get into music? Uh, sure. So I got into music when I was about seventeen years old. You know, I used to play for church when I was younger. I started playing guitar when I was twelve. Um, when I moved to Australia, basically my, my, my family got into a church and I started playing guitar for the band. And that's basically how I started, you know, getting into music and finding a, more about like the whole R&B side. Cause I, I used to listen to just like, you know, rock and all the old school stuff like Queen, on Jervy and all that. But, um... All the all the creation may uh, came to place when I was like eighteen. I started writing my own song after after like you know being being in the music scene for like a while. I was doing like cover gigs in the city, busking in the city. Um, I decided to like sort of get into my own zone. So yeah, I released my released my first single one. I was like 18. Um, it did pretty good. Uh-huh. I decided to make another um, like tape, mixtape, tape, sort of like an album thing, um, and that was that did really well too. And after the sun, I made after the sun two years ago, and then now we're here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> got you. Tell me, um, who were some of your musical inspirations growing up? Um, I've got a couple, so I, I listen to a lot of, um, Guns N' Roses, you know, um, listen to a lot of D'Angelo. Okay. I listen to Frank Ocean a lot. Okay. Especially in my high school years. Um, oh, Queen. Okay. Uh, but, like, the main, main inspiration that I've, you know, that sort of like pushed me to start writing with Frank Ocean because that was like I was like in year year eleven, year twelve, I think. And I was I, I loved listening to like, you know, like his words and like how he came up with like the different different phrases and like just how he told his story was very, very interesting to me. And I wanted to be like you know, or it be like him. I started, I started writing. I, I, I started practicing, like you know, poetry and all that. And okay. yeah, those are my my inspiration. Nice man. Um, my girlfriend is a big fan of yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah, wow. yeah. So she 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 gave me a couple questions. She gave me a couple questions to ask, right? One of the questions are, what was the inspiration for the song Ocean? Ocean, oh, that's a good question. Um, (laughs) So basically, when I wrote Ocean, I was actually just thinking about, I was was in the stage of my life where I didn't know where I should be, or like what I should be doing, because this was like, you know, I got out of high school and like, I was just working a part-time job and I was like, I wasn't really happy with it. Mm-hmm. And I was doing this music side thing. Um, so I was like thinking about life a lot. 
And I, I sort of like, I sort of imagine myself being in an ocean. Um, you know, and the ocean's like very, it's very deep and like it's the unknown. You know, it's, it's a scary, but it, it, at the same time, it's like peaceful and beautiful. And like, that's when, that's where I got the inspiration to write a song about life and like, you know, what, what makes life worth it, I guess. Okay. How was it collaborating with... Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, um, yeah, I I was just saying, like, that song is basically, um, you know, it's just like a reminder that, you know, things are going to be good for eventually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another question about the song. How was it collaborating with Olivia... Escuyos? I don't know if I said her last name correctly. Yeah. 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 Uh, how was it recording with her, and did you guys record together or separately? Um, we actually recorded together. So we we did. We actually recorded the song in my room back in November, I think. No, that was like around October, twenty eighteen. So yeah, like Olivia's been my my old like one of my oldest friends. I met her when I was basically performing in the street in Melbourne, mm. and she she actually stayed for like half an hour watching me play guitar in front of like random people. So afterwards, she she came up to me and she was like, "Yo, like you gotta hit me up, you know, let's work together, get up, you know." And then we started working together, in, like songs writing. And yeah, like that night we made Ocean. But I actually, I actually wrote the whole song. I just have, I just had her perform like the second verse because I feel like it, 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 it would, it would have been a great, you know, contrast. Mm. Having a female voice in there. Mm. Okay. Nice. It's an amazing song too, by the way. Who are, who are your vocal inspirations? Vocal inspirations. Um, I would say I've listened to a lot of um, like D'Angelo's. One of my vocal inspirations. Um, I don't know if you know an artist called Jordan Rockhart. American? Well, is he is he American? He's, he's actually he's Australian I'm pretty sure because he I'm pretty sure he came from Brisbane but he moved to London a long time ago um. but he, he's he's quite a, he's, he's not, not an artist but he's been around for a minute mm. and mm. he works with like you know the likes of Tom Mish um, Lo- Loyal Carner he's just a really good soul singer mm-hmm. so like I, I, I listened to a lot of his stuff when I was you know trying to develop my singing because I wanted to be I wanted to get into more of that soul group. Um, what else did I listen to? I listened to a lot of Michael Jackson, um, Justin Timberlake. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> those are good ones. A lot of art. Those no, are, thank you. Those are definitely good ones. Yeah. What's your favorite song you've written a lot? Oh, um, right now, if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna, like, include the ones that I haven't released yet, I would say Meet Me in Amsterdam would be my favorite song that I've written. And why, why would you say that? Um, just because, you know, it's, a, like, it's an actual, I, I, I went through, like, what I wrote, so, like, it actually happened, like, what I wrote in the song was what I was going through throughout the whole year of like 2018. <laughs> so yeah, like I'm, I met this girl online and like, you know, we were basically talking for a minute and yeah. Oh, okay. Sort of like developing this relationship, but like we didn't, we never really actually met in Amsterdam. So did you met on Instagram? Uh, did you, did you, like, you you met on Instagram? We met, we met on Instagram, but we never met on like we met, we never met in person. Like we we were meant to, 
that we planned a meeting up in, in Amsterdam. Uh-huh. And I went to Amsterdam, but she she just you know she it wasn't it wasn't even different. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who? She wasn't uh, she wasn't trying to catfish you, was she? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, nah, she wasn't. She wasn't. It was just like it was, I'm, I was in a different different level of like mind that that time. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go, but if she doesn't go, it's so good. Uh-huh. Like, gotcha, I sort of like, I sort of like, yeah, like, I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to work. So, I sort of like ended it early, but I still, I still, I still told her to like, yo, come through, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't come through. So. Wow. She wanted it all, man. She wanted you to give her all to her, man. <laughs> yeah, she re- she really did. She really did. She was, I mean, I, I don't know. I heard but I didn't break her heart. <laughs> I hope not. But that, that's, that's, right. that's, that's right. gonna make it hard for the next dude. <laughs> oh my day! <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> All right. Next next question. Right here we go. There's a lot of emotion in your music. What's your songwriting process like? Where does this emotion come from, and how do you put that into your songwriting process? Well, when I write songs. I definitely try not to force myself to just, like, write for the sake of, like, you know, making something. Um, I always try and wait for the right time when I'm feeling, I'm feeling it in my chest and I'm like, yo, like, I got to say something about this. Um, because I feel like, I feel like for me, it's, it's, that's, like, the easiest way to, like, finish a song and write a song and, like, come up with, you know, the best melody. Because you're obviously in that state of, you know, you, you can feel something and like that sort of like, it sort of goes out to your music and your writing as well. So, my 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 writing process, I I don't think I have one. Um, I just write whenever yeah. I feel like it. Um, nice. I try not to force myself to write, but I I I, I write about everything that's been happening in my life and my relationship and, you know, in my, like, in my friend's relationship, the stories that I hear about. Um, I don't, I don't usually finish songs straight away. I, I usually just come back to them, like, you know, after three, two days and then just, like, you know, vibe with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's my friend, then. <laughs> Sorry, dear friend. Do you have, like, do you write, it doesn't matter where you write, or do you have, like, a specific place that you, you get inspired to write at? Say that again. Some people like to write outside, some people like to write in the studio, like, where, where's your place that you really like to write your music? I, I, I like to write, I mean, I can write anywhere as long as I'm, you know, by myself. A, a, a lot of times, like, when I was in LA, I was working with people in the studio, and you know, it was like it was something new. It was something. It was something new to me because you know, I'm, I'm I've always been working in my bedroom, and like that's what I got used to, and I feel like I'm very comfortable working by myself and like coming up with my own words and you know melodies. But yeah, um, yeah, in LA, I've I've, I've you know gotten used to like working with other people as well, so. I feel like I would say, though, I do prefer working in, you know, inside a quiet space, cup of tea, my notebook, and like, you know, my laptop that, like, just a little bit of sunlight. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That's my, that's my preferable space. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. King. All right, so um, I was thinking about something that uh, Prince said. Um, he said about Beyonce. He said that Beyonce would be a a better singer if she played an instrument. And the fact that you play guitar, do you think that that brings a different dimension to your music? Oh, definitely. Like, I've, the, the playing guitar is like a big, big, um, that word. I guess, like, It's like a big help for me because, like, when I come up with like melodies, you know, like I, I sometimes 
like to use this technique when I'm like playing guitar, you know, the, like the scales and like, you know, the different, um, different like phrases that you play in the guitar sort of can help you come up with melodies. Mm -hmm. And also like, like performing live on stage, it's just, you know, it's a lot more fun. Uh-huh. Personally, like I feel like because I love, I listen to a lot of like John Mayer as well, and like when I used uh, I I used to watch his live shows, and like I I just always think that you know he looked so cool with that guitar on the stage. I told and, like, I totally. I, I, I feel like I feel like definitely having being able to sing and like play an instrument is crazy. Like that's yeah. like a big up for me. So I totally agree yeah. with you. I totally. <laughs> I totally agree. When I see a singer live and they and they're playing that instrument, it just seems like it's more exciting. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. Yeah. I like, yeah. think there's 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 more like you know like oh like does this artist know to play another instrument? It's sort of like you become like this you know person that people think like oh like and like you might be like can you play keys too or like you know <laughs> yeah. Great to see artists, that, you know, doing doing actual music. Yeah, yeah. So I, I read something that you yeah. were you were and you you felt like the American market was kind of tough to break into. So like, why did why do you feel like the American market is tough? Um, I mean, I was like talking, you know, in like a, like a new upcoming artist. Okay. Like, like, especially coming from a different country, you know, like, here in Australia, we don't really have, like, a massive platform like they have in the U.S., so, like, we're not, so we're not really, like, used to that sort of, like, business, I guess. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, a whole different vibe. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the thing that made it hard, I feel like the thing that makes it hard is like building a connection, you know, in a new place. It's like I see what you're saying. It's just, it's like that's the hardest thing. Yeah, because like um, where where you're from, you I know, you pretty not much. Impossible. What happened? What happened? I said it's not impossible. It's just it's just gonna get it's just gonna take some time. Yeah. 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 I, I understand, definitely. But you, you mentioned that um, you used to perform on the street. like So there's not, do you, do you feel like there's not a lot of opportunity out there for you to like perform in, in Melbourne? Is, is, that, is that where you used to perform on the street? Yeah, well, I started, I started performing in the street because I actually just, you know, I wanted to like build up my confidence and like earn a little bit of like, Pocket money. Okay. Because yeah. I was like, you know, running out of petrol and shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I mean, there's, there's really not a lot here. Like, we have, like, we have, like, different, you know, local scenes, local music scenes when they, they, they hold, like, open mic nights and, you know. Yeah. Talent shows and everything, but nothing that sort of, like, that that will bring you out out there, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a bunch of labels as well, but I mean it o it'll only get you that far. Okay. Australia is sort of like Australia is kind of disconnected when it comes to like the R and B scene. Uh huh. Okay. All yeah. right. So I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to explain. Like it's just it's just different. <laughs> no, I I think it's funny that you mentioned. When you mention the R&B scene, I just wanted to ask a question about that. What is your stance on the state of genuine R&B music today? Sorry, say that again? I said, what is your stance on the state of genuine R&B music today? What does that mean? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about the state of R&B? Like how R&B music is the, going right now? Oh, oh, the, oh. the music that's coming out now. Um, damn, I feel like, I feel like it, it, it definitely went too far away from like, you know, how R&B should be, I think, like, should sound, 
Um, but I, there's a lot of like <clears throat> artists nowadays that are like going back to that old real R and B because like to me R and B is like about real love and you know it's never about like the like you know the clubs and like your know, booties and <laughs> to me it's like the real love and like you know it's like the love story that. Like, people sing about, like, you know, like, Alicia Keys did that shit, and yeah. um, Justin Timberlake used to sing about, like, real love and shit. Yeah. Now people sing about beauties and just, like, trying to, trying to, trying to, you know, I don't know. This is different now. It's like, I guess it's like, you know, the modern day take of, of like, R&B, but I'm, I'm, with my music, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring back the old school R&B feel, like, the, the real love. Real love story. That's that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely get that from your music too, man. Like, Me too. You have this this yeah. vintage, this vibe, bro, and mm. it's just something that's been missing, man. And I really enjoy listening to your. I feel stuff, like bro. I feel like that too. I feel, I, I feel like yeah, definitely. I, I feel like we definitely need some more of that, like more of the real, um, you know, like. Disney fantasy love story shit. Is that that's what makes it good? Yeah, it good. yeah. Yeah, let the imagination flow. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that yeah. booty, 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 booty. artists from the UK as well. Um, I've been listening to Skepta, <laughs> Skepta's new album. Um, who else? External Legger is cool too. I love External Legger. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think I've been spending a lot of time listening to Leo and Bridges as well. Okay. That's basically it. Yeah, Megan Bridge is fired. <laughs> All right. All right, so I don't, I don't want to hold you up too longer. So what I'm going to do to break it up a little bit, I'm going to just throw five questions at you, and then you can answer them how you want. And, um, yes, you know, you can you can say pass if you want, what, whatever you want to no do. No pressure, no pressure. All right? Okay. All right, yeah. so uh, when it comes to dating, would you prefer... Celebrity girl or regular girl? Um, regular girl. Okay. All right. Has a fan ever slid in your DMs and you responded like, "Yo, let's get, let's let's get, let's make it get it popping." <laughs> <laughs> actually, I actually have. Um, I, I actually with someone right now. Oh, okay. From Instagram. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep. It, I'm trying to keep it low key. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. All right. Smart man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, like, I, like, I like to keep my, my girl hybrid. I don't okay. know, for some reason. It's just like, kind of like, make, make it seem like, you know, I don't know. How, okay. I'm, I'm single, but like, I'm actually just feeling like. <laughs> oh, we know how that is. <laughs> What's something a female? What what's something a female might find annoying about you? Um, I fall asleep like easily. <laughs> you fall, yo, you you fall asleep That's while real. while watching a movie. Well, and you, she's I trying asleep, to. I fall asleep while watching a movie, like <laughs> straight away. Yo, Vinny, don't feel bad, bro. I do the same thing, man. I do the same thing, bro. <laughs> I just pass out. Yeah, man. I will just... be up one second. I'm, in... I'm gone. It's over. <laughs> I think the king is just falling asleep that quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you do you speak any other languages? Yeah, I speak um fluent 
music I love. I grew up in the Philippines. Oh, okay. So how would you say, um, uh, I'll smack the, te- the taste out your mouth. How would you say that? Edit it again. How would you say, I'll smack the taste out your mouth? <laughs> say it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, would, I would add another word, but I feel like it's pretty, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I'll slap the shit out of you. I don't want to say that live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get that. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. You got to take the part. <laughs> all right. All right. What's um your dream vacation, the, the, the place where you want to go? That you haven't been yet. Oh, I want to go to Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, me, to me too. Me too. I haven't been there yet. Yeah, me neither. No, no. When they open the world back up, maybe. Oh, yep. I heard a lot of a lot. Of, I heard a lot of things about Hawaii that makes me want to go to Hawaii. Like you know, that was special and shit. <laughs> oh, okay, man. I don't want to hold you too much longer. Um, we 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 two we. Quick questions. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, two more. Uh, Lenny, what are you working on now? Um, right now I'm currently uh in the process of mixing my album. Awesome. And. I am going to be releasing a single in the next com- next two weeks. Uh, it might be like the 15th of May for you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that the song you put up, you were talking about on your Instagram story? You said it's something to dance to yeah. a little bit. That's the one. <laughs> What's the name of it? It's, it's gonna, Well, it, it's called Bedtime Story. Oh, okay. And he has um, he had a, he has a very '80s vibe, but yeah, it's like it's 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 very good. Trust me. <laughs> and last question: Tell us something that people do not know about Rennie. Say that again. All right, you you're cutting a little bit. Tell us something that people do not know about you. Something that people don't know about me. Um, yeah. Fun fact: I actually, I can actually only hear from one ear. Wow! Like that's something a lot of people don't know about me. So I'm I'm partially wow. deaf. <laughs> oh like, wow! My right ear's not working. That you would think yeah, that you would think that would be tough for a musician to hear only out of one ear. Yeah, but I don't I don't think it should be an issue. I mean, if you love music, you know, you got to pursue it. No. You know, pursue passion. That's, that's so crazy to hear, especially hear how your music sounds. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely. Oh, in time. Thank you. Definitely. So, um... I definitely don't want to hold you too much longer. I definitely appreciate you calling in. You're wel- I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. You're welcome to call in anytime when you drop that single, your your album, anytime. You're welcome. Yes, sir. All right. That would be nice. All right. So, thank you so much, Rondell. We we about to get out of here. Anything else you wanna you wanna say? Hey, man, Rennie, bless you, bro. Continue doing what you do. You're so talented. I can't wait to hear more of your music. I'm looking forward to the album. I'm going to follow you on Instagram as soon as this is over because <laughs> I want you to know what you mean. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and um, just take care and stay safe out here, bro. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. The A&R Vent Podcast.